All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Cardinellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And today we're going to ask one question. Who is the Yang Gang? Demographically, statistically, mathematically, who is the Yang Gang? Of what flesh are they comprised? Cody the Oracle is going to shed some light on this from recent data released by none other than our buddies over at 538. And I am actually surprised how much has not changed. Cody. What's going on? Uh, yeah, well, I, I thought it was interesting because there's, I mean, as far as who makes up any political base, I have to imagine largely pretty much the cross-section of society. Like, it's people that live in this country that support candidates. So if you take a, a cross-section of 50 people in this country, you probably find a lot of similar ones. However, with Andrew Yang, one thing that we do, we know a little bit of this, So, but the numbers themselves are interesting. Anyway, apologize. Here's the article. 538 did it. Uh, first off, before I get too far into this, do not believe, this is in general, 538, just how they didn't do things. It's not like these super comprehensive study. They didn't poll 50,000 people. They didn't take 15, 20 different polls and pull through it. I think they specifically look at a few larger sample size polls, but uh, it's worth noting. And one of them is also the morning consult poll, which the results have been interesting in. But some of this data does come from more solid sources. So anyway, one thing we've been talking about for a while and it's obvious. Andrew Yang support is young. Very, very young base. Going around inter interacting with the Yang gang, going to yep. this stuff. The fact that he's really popular on the internet. I mean, young, young, young. The actual numbers, though, are very interesting. So when you look at the amount of support he has by age group, according to, like I said, this was the morning consult poll they, they've been doing. This has been running, of course, for a while. And it's now, this is a 13,000 respondent poll. A lot of people, but still. He's now surpassed Bernie Sanders by some metrics as far as youth support. Bernie Sanders wow. had been the dominant force in youth support for a while. Now, the only problem is, much like Bernie Sanders, and to a more extreme degree than Bernie Sanders, oh, people over the age of 50, basically, this one starts at 45, aren't having it. I mean, Andrew Yang is the least, according to his morning consult data, the least popular candidate in the 45-plus demo. Which is crazy. However, wow. being the most popular in 18 to 44, you know, it helps. Right? It makes up for it. But very interesting to see how he's actually moved now being like us. That was the always the rub with Bernie Sanders as well, which is that Bernie Sanders is so good with young people. You're like, wow, how is he not leading? And it's because he pulls at 31 percent with with older people. But the one thing worth noting is that's been a problem for Bernie Sanders in multiple yeah. elections is that he just he's not winning over older voters at all. Well, what does it mean then when you look at Andrew Yang, who's having a larger issue polarization? Again, my opinion is that this is based off one poll and it's not actually that bad. However, according to this poll, at the very least, 13,000 respondents, right? It is like if you are under 44, you're down with them over. Not at all. Very interesting. It's uh. Now, I don't believe it's actually the largest gap. I think there's a larger gap between Amy Klobuchar when it comes to young yeah. people want nothing to do with Amy Klobuchar <laughs> oh, and brutal. older people. Dude, 80% support over the age of 45 for Amy Klobuchar. Jeez, really? Yeah. So she's the boomer it's an queen. 80, 20 exactly. Andrew Yang is different in support, according to this one metric, is less than 50% when we see some as high as 60. Point being, though, it's still a large thing. So that's one thing. And the other thing they mention here is that Andrew Yang's base is very male. So when they break it down, and again, so the 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 average Andrew Yang supporter is a male under the age of 30. Which again, I would say wow. probably from who I interact with online, sounds yep, about sounds right. sounds about right. <laughs> I am a male under the age of 30 currently right now. Um, well, we noticed this in the first voicemail. Remember where our first like 13 or 14 voicemails oh, yeah. came in and then Brooke called like, oh, a girl. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. let's put her on. Most, <laughs> yeah. Mostly Street young men. cred. We got girls too. I would say maybe <laughs> there's more vocal, but I would say, I, I think I see- I'm a, sure there's a natural you know, hierarchy based no, upon gender. I was gender, saying an age. I was saying an age. I, I feel like when I go out and I talk with people online, I see more older gang supporters that are being reflected here. I, I definitely yeah. feel like it's not not that drastic. I see a lot of people that are over the age of 40 or 50 that support Andrew Yang. So I, I think that part of it's a little bit weird. So I wonder when it gets to the gender ones as well. Because when I go to these events, it isn't like, 100% dominated by males. But the other thing is, though, is I don't, whenever I'm at these events, I'm not actually looking around, you know, doing a mental poll in my head. So perhaps it is predominantly male. I'm not sure. But this is what stood out to me the most. Because like I said, they're Hit taking it. data off one poll set or maybe two. It's not everyone. It's not everything. This isn't the empirical facts that the 
every Yang support 30 old male, right? It's not true. I've met plenty of female Yang supporters. But this little stuff to me is very odd. Because it does speak to they're probably being... Because I can't imagine there's a proclivity to, to donate that changes. It's probably just volume. Listen to this. An analysis by the Center for Responsive Politics in November found that women were less likely than men to contribute to the Yang campaign. Only 29% of Yang's itemized contributions have come from female donors so far. Oh, interesting. Which is less than one in three. I mean, that's a very... And, yeah. And that's it. I... I I would say, while it might be like 60-40 male to female support for Yang, that what parenthetical I see, blows my mind too. And that's what gets crazier. I, I, I was kind of testing people with this before. No one, no one would guess the the candidate running with the lowest percentage of women donors would be Tulsi Gabbard. But less than one in four women, or one in four people donating to Tulsi, are female, according to the study. Wow, that blows less than my one mind. Because that is crazy. It's like, what is it about Tulsi Gabbard that is so un, uh, uh, so is it that she's so unappealing to women voters or so yeah. appealing to male voters, right? What is it? Yeah, that I, I is wouldn't, bizarre, right? Yeah, I that wouldn't stands think, out. I wouldn't think that just because, you know, she's a female that all of a sudden sixty percent of her donors are gonna be female and there would be some yeah, kind of great groundswell. 50, right? Almost everywhere. But but, but you yeah. would assume it would be not the bottom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, not the least. Yeah, like not one in four. I I, I like I would assume for all of these, even with Yang the variance is pretty high. I would imagine Roughly 50-50, like 46 to like like 46 percent to 54 is a pretty big difference, right? So you're seeing 29 percent and 24. Now, the other thing they go on to mention here, I had kind of brought up the backwards angle of this, and they talk about the other end. Uh, I have thought in the past perhaps one thing that leads to Yang's predominantly male audience is the fact that he was kind of getting popular on predominantly male platforms originally, right? Like, Joe Rogan, I assume, was a predominantly male audience, and that was one of the first places he really exploded, right? It was one of the first really big things yeah. he did, and I think that is why he just started off with a mostly male kind of coalition of followers from different parts of the political spectrum, and then over time, it's kind of maybe could be the issue there, but one thing that's interesting is they're saying here is that when you look, they postulate that, uh, or I'm not going to say that word again, they say that it's possible the reason why Yang is appearing higher in the betting markets than he is in the polling is because predominantly young men are the ones involved betting on politics. Now, what stands out to me the most in this is that could perhaps be, because here's the thing, right? If Andrew Yang's audience is mostly men under 30, okay, I have to imagine men under 30 without a history of voting, which is another thing. I think, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, Cardin showed me that there was an informal poll done on a uh, the... Andrew Yang subreddit, I believe, and they found that 50% of respondents didn't vote in 16. Men under 30 who didn't vote in 2016 do not show up on polls. I have, I. Why would yeah. that be the demo that you're polling, right? Young millennial voters that are men who didn't vote before. It like, would be a very specific demo to overrepresent in your polls. Because when they do these polls, whenever I've talked to anyone who is like into politics, like in like actual these poor souls actually working in the business, they they all say no. This, only things that matters when they talk about polling, all this stuff is the voters. Like, we have to poll voters. Don't poll people. I don't care about someone who's voted once in 40 years. Don't care yeah. about their opinions. Poll the voters. Well, Yang supporters, generally speaking, are not historically voters. Generally speaking, are young men. They are yeah. not heavily, heavily Do you have the other graphic polls. that I sent you that was an informal poll done, not a scientific yeah. poll? No, like, yeah, I brought that up. Yeah, I'll see if I can pull it up. I don't have it okay. ready yet. Yeah, I can pull it up in a second. So that was one thing that stood out to me because some of the other stuff I talk about here is mostly, like, I don't... I, they go through stuff. However, what I wanted to get into as well okay. is because while that is true, the other thing that's important to mention, and I think this is one of the things about Andrew Yang that is the reason why I don't think it's that big of a deal that these numbers look like this right now, is I think, like I said, Andrew Yang's fan base started off predominantly male because of the channels he was getting popular in, but this is a, a little bit of a graphic. So what it's showing you, this is the change in likely primary voters. Again, this is the, the people you care about when you're polling. Their change in favorability from candidates before or after the fifth debate, which is the debate in November, right? You'll notice the largest gainer in this are Andrew Yang and Amy Klobuchar, respectively, with the largest jumps in net favorability. Wow. Now, it is worth noting the only person that was seen as less favorable after the debate was Joe Biden. Ouch. Who was also one of the most popular people in general, right? Yeah. So it, it, that's the more to stand. And it's also worth noting that Kamala Harris jumped up three points in popularity, roughly, and then dropped out of the race. So... I'm not saying this, this means everything, but I would just say anecdotally, Andrew Yang does seem to be the kind of candidate that can win people over with exposure. But the other side of that coin is... Is exposure. He's got exposure, 
and we're still seeing. I mean, th- he's struggling with the demographic. Exactly. Like our third video on Andrew Yang, our third video on Andrew Yang was who is the Yang gang, yeah. and we did a five thirty eight blog graph that showed he struggled most with the African American vote and with the female vote, but did best with the young internet engaged um, male vote. And I, I'm looking at these numbers that are coming out, and I'm thinking, man, you haven't put a dent in this. You know, like, what What are you doing with this $10 million that you got in Q3, man? Like, we got, you got to hire somebody that can make it so you put a dent into, into the African-American vote and the female vote. Because I think, like, I can't remember the exact stats, so I don't want to be guilty of making up stats on, uh, on the fly. But if I remember correctly, aren't a majority of registered Democrats in the early state of South Carolina, which I believe is third to vote, it's either a majority or else a massive chunk that you can't win without, okay, um, of registered Democrats in South Carolina are African Americans. So you're DOA if you're not doing well with them, you know, because you'll just you'll you'll just get tanked in yeah, the third state. I, I mean, I, I, I as far as I know, it could be different. The only candidate I know that's specifically struggling in that demo, like really bad, I think is Pete Buttigieg. I think the rest of the candidates are more or less. Oh, I think Michael Bloomberg as well. Um, but Michael Bloomberg is going to be unpopular because he's the mayor. He was the mayor of New York City. That's my theory until it's proven wrong. De okay. Blasio and Michael Bloomberg were the most unpopular Democrats running. And told De Blasio dropped out. And you notice how they kind of tag teamed it? De Blasio drops out, and Bloomberg's like, it's gotta be one New York mayor in this thing. And then he steps in and runs. Like, I feel like if he drops out, Giuliani has to step in and run. Right? Yeah. Like, it's like there has to be one. One of us has to be running. But um No election yeah. without representation but, but, from yeah. the state or the city of New York. Yeah, so I, I kind of I don't want to say throw out, but those people, I mean, if you former New York City mayors tend to be super unpopular just in general. So uh, I don't know. I I think the bigger thing with, with Andrew Yang and what the what what kind of why I want to make the video talking about this looking at this stuff is that it's I think there's the question right now with the Yang gang is kind of like the chicken and the egg almost as far as the support goes because I wonder is it just that where Andrew Yang originally started developing a following on was predominantly male spaces so he developed a predominantly male following or I mean the longer this goes on the weirder it becomes like, is there something about him that turns females away could it be the predominantly male following I have no idea but it is weird to me this isn't leveling out as time goes on because if it really was the yet that that's true you, what is at this yeah. point you have to ask the question how much of it is, is a lack of exposure yeah. and how much of it is people that get expo- well, he seems to win people over though that's the thing all the data suggests he can win people over or what if he's just continuing to win over about guys. three to one men. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah what if he just th- th- three one men to women. perpetually wins over guys? I, I Again, to me, it seems weird. There's nothing about his policies to me that jump well, out. I'm as, also like, curious. male policies. Maybe I'm wrong. I, let me know in the comments if anything about his policies strikes out as uniquely male, but nothing about it, nothing about the kind of campaign, the way he carries himself, stands out as something that would be a uniquely male candidate. So, well, see, I don't I'm see also the inverse curious. Either. It's I'm, really weird. I'm curious what the natural hierarchy is here, though. Because, for example, we know that 70% of YouTube is male. That YouTube is a predominantly male social media pl- platform. That's a good point. Okay? Is the morning consult a predominantly male use platform? Yeah. Like so so point. also, uh, back before they went belly up, uh, Tumblr. Tumblr was like 70% female uh, image sharing social media platform. Yeah. And that these natural hierarchies had developed. So the chances were if you were a Tumblr star you would be female. If you're a YouTube star, you would be male, right? Just because of these natural hierarchies. Is there any kind of natural hierarchy amongst early engagers, especially young early engagers in politics that um, would show a difference between male and female in that engagement, yielding a natural inclination uh, uh, towards uh, a predominantly male... Like I, I don't know I, I'm 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 wondering if there's I mean like I said a couple possible because I've never no, seen this in my life. It's possible that morning consult for whatever reason is the most female audience, right? It's possible that just for the morning consult poll for whatever reason that data that, set that also might help explain yeah. Tulsi Gabbard's rise well, being predominantly the, the, male, the, the, right? The, the Tulsi Gabbard one is the Tulsi Gabbard is <laughs> one of those numbers that when I see a number like that, it almost makes me immediately just want to say, "Ah, oh, crap! I got to throw all this data out." Like when when you see that, it's like, wh- what is it? Where Tulsi is so like, I don't understand what, because like I said, anything 
larger than like a 20% difference would be kind of weird to me. I would imagine that it'd be roughly the same for every candidate. Yeah. A little bit different. I mean, like 10% is a big deal to me, right? 10% more men or women support Canada than another. It's like, it's a big percentage, especially when we get to like major candidates, right? If you're kind of like a really niche, you know, small, like if there was somebody running is like, I'm a man's man. I'm a, like, I would imagine you have a largely male audience, right? But <laughs> it's unique for Asian, I think. Uh, again, though, I don't want to drop too much into it. They also go on talking about his support from Asian Americans, which I guess unsurprising, right? He'd be the first Asian American man to really have a legitimate shot running down the campaign. Like, you know, not surprising to me uh-huh. saying that. Um, and then and they, they talk- make up only 3% of the uh, primary electorate. I found that intriguing. Okay. And then they talk about a Yang is also an outsider candidate who doesn't get as much support from... Uh, oh, this is really interesting too, though, to bring up. Um, still, for being an outsider candidate, Yang does not get as much support from Trump supporters or conservatives as Gabbard does. Uh, and in a poll from The Economist, they cite 25% of Trump voters who said they plan to vote in the 2020 primary said they intend to support Gabbard. Versus just two percent that said they were supporting Yang. Well, that's because she has been willing to go no, but, against the DNC like, and Kamala. But it's not twenty-five to eleven, or twenty-five to, thir- to thirteen, or twenty. Oh, but her 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 no, visible but, clashes with the DNC have been far no, more publicized than the non clashes of Andrew. No, Yang. but I understand that. But still, I'm just saying it is very interesting to me that, according to again one specific poll, that. Only 2% of Republicans said they'd vote in it, so they'd vote for Yang. Now, it's not that crazy to me because I understand the idea that the the Trump voters he wins over. But again, no, it says Trump voters. It doesn't say conservatives or Republicans. It says Trump voters. Independents. Like, yeah. I do think Tulsi's popular with independents, yes. But interesting that according to this poll, again, one data set, but very interesting to see Andrew Yang perform so poorly in that one metric, right? It's just weird. That's not generally what you saw. Generally, you would see him do higher in a former Trump voters who they would vote for. However, perhaps the difference too as well is that it's maybe not former Trump. I don't want to get too far into the data. It's a small, just a small point. Um, that was just a couple things that I really wanted to go for, go through in this in this article. I'll have it linked, of course, so you guys can read through it more. Uh, I just kind of want to take a look at it because there was some interesting stuff in there. The, the thing that jumped out to me, of course, what jumped off the paper to me was it, it wasn't a graph made off one particular poll, but when they said just objectively looking at the itemized donations, you see so many more males donating than females. That's really weird to me because, like I said, anything bigger than 10% jumps off the page at me. Seeing almost 70% is ridiculous. I yeah. I don't fully understand that. The, the, I'll take a deeper look at this thing, but I have to, at face value, if the Center for Responsive Politics... Um, just looked at itemized donations. I, I have to imagine there's a whole lot of funny business going on, so maybe that number is real. So that's like, that's what jumped off the page. The rest of the stuff, I predominantly young male audience doesn't surprise me that much when you're a predominantly internet candidate who got popular off Joe Rogan. He's transitioning to something much larger now. Yeah. But still, like, it, it takes time to win people over. It's probably people who heard about him on Rogan, saw Rogan clips, or saw clips of him on... There's people, a lot of the times, who they support a candidate, not because they had this eureka moment, but because yeah. they see about him, they hear about him, and they finally go, you know what, they hear that one thing. They say, yeah. I've seen this guy on TV, I've seen him on my, on, my, on, my, on my Twitter for months, and now he's talking... That's more likely, there isn't, like, there... There isn't, like, the average person isn't just like, I have no idea who Andrew Yang is, and they hear about him, and they go, oh, my God, hallelujah, I'm supporting him now. It is a lot more of a, over time, you win them over. So, maybe we're going to see that correction come eventually, but, I mean, that is a statistically significant data point that so much of the audience is specifically male under 30. I think that is significant. I don't know what it means going forward. Uh, I just will say I, I have seen that having an audience that's particularly young and being disliked by the older audience definitely has harmed Bernie Sanders. When nobody over the age of 45 really likes you, it's really hard to run a campaign. Yeah. So if Yang finds himself in that spot, that could be difficult. I agree. Oh, wait. That's a good... You just said, if nobody over the age of 45 likes you, it's hard to run a campaign. But the real question is, could you effectively win a youthful campaign? Bernie Sanders showed he couldn't. And we do know the baby boomers are the highest percentage voters, though they are no longer the largest block. We had boomer politics in America for 30 years straight because they were the largest block that also had the highest percentage of voters. Therefore, fighting the boomer politics battle was such a huge thing for so long because that was the demographic to beat because it was the majority demographic age wise. Um, Now, however, millennials have become the largest voting block. Okay. And I've seen data that suggests that still boomers are voting in a higher percentage, 
But the question is, if you could start getting the Gen Z and the millennial vote, what percentage of that would you have to master and what little percentage of the boomer vote would you have to get to actually effectively run a campaign? That, that's a winning campaign, I should say. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, that's, that's a really interesting question. I am surprised that Andrew Yang, with all of his intelligence and his out-of-the-box thinking, hasn't found a way to make inroads into the two demographics that he has struggled with the longest. Okay? And who, according to his own words, would benefit the most from the freedom dividend? Okay? So that right there I see as, as I don't like using the F word too oft, often, but a failure of the campaign to make those well, inroads. No, but, but here's the thing. At the end of the day, is I maybe because we follow the campaign a lot, but I do hear him say, like I said, I hear him say this stuff. I see him bring everyone out. My larger point is I think we're just still too far ahead of the curve. I think this is going to... Well, that, that, that's where my question about natural hierarchies yeah. came in. It's that, like, I'm curious yeah. if ahead of the momentous curve, because for example, if you look at talk show contestants, I, I know a lot of data from entertainment because I worked in entertainment a long time, and this is a stupid fact to bring up that most people probably aren't aware of. But generally in uh, game shows, women do better at pop culture questions. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they drastically outperform the men in pop culture specific questions. Okay. And that's because they're engaged in it more. All right. But in other like spatial reasoning questions and so on and so forth, men outperform women. So I'm almost just wondering, is there some kind of natural hierarchy that would actually make uh, early adoption of political information gravitate towards the males? I, I don't know. If you guys have information, actually, I would love for you guys to send it to us. You can always send, uh, just tag us on Twitter at PSP Radio 1. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. Or you can actually send us an email at problemsolverpolitics.com. Don't forget to pick up a hat or contribute to the channel with our PayPal link that's there if you have a chance to. And if you can, please remember to share this video, like, and subscribe. You got anything you want to say before I wrap it up, Cody? No. No. All right. This is Problem Solver Politics. We'll see you guys in the next video.